I thought I was a failure at drums when I was starting out. I was constantly searching YouTube for solutions to my problems that I was facing currently with drums. But the problem was that I couldn't really find like any solutions to my problems. All YouTubers were saying was just to practice guys. Oh yes, try this magical rudiment. So since I couldn't find it when I was starting out, I thought why not just share share my knowledge that I've learned to you so that you don't experience the same problem as I did when I was starting drumming. So I didn't even notice this problem, but like I had it when I was starting out. And this problem is one that I noticed in almost all beginner drummers. And it's quite a serious problem. It's the chicken wing problem. <laughs> No, it's no, it's not KFC. Shut the fuck up. Shut, shut up. Shut. I'm gonna get like 50 fucking comments on this. So the problem is because you're new to drums, your body doesn't know how to naturally play drums. So it's kind of awkward when you first start drums because drums aren't like a guitar where you just hold them and then some finger action going on. Like drums are with your whole fucking limbs played together. So it's a very, very different instrument. And if you've played played any other instrument than drums then you know that you have to adapt to drums like how to even like play drums because the playing and stuff the technique is all different instead of just using your fingers you're using your fingers to actually like do this to the drumsticks and stuff so to fix this problem it's because your body doesn't know, you know, how to play drums. So you gotta kind of adapt it. And over time, I found that it just goes away like naturally. But I mean, you could try to remember to close your arms a bit more because playing like this, okay, like you can't, okay? Like that that is not so efficient. And plus like you're not doing a fucking lateral race like this. So it will fix itself, don't worry. And this actually solves our second problem, which is what I like to call the delightly queen's tape pinky problem. So you call these chips instead of crispity crunch munchy cracker jack snappler nibbly snap crack and pop west pool shire shire queen's lovely jubbly delights. That's a bit cringe in it. So this is also a problem that my teacher always pointed out to me. He was like yo dude like your fucking pinky is always like here while holding the drumstick like but get your goddamn pinky down. So um, that's what I did. And what I did to get rid of it is to just practice holding my drumsticks. It's very simple, but I mean, it just, a lot of these like problems just go away with time when you actually just practice in general because your body adapts to drums more naturally you know you start to play more naturally you start to like have muscle memory and stuff so if you're a beginner watching this video trust me dude i went through the same problem i am two years into my drumming journey and finally some of these problems are being fixed now this is a problem that i still struggle to this day and after playing drums for like two years and that was my timekeeping. My timekeeping was always shit. When I was trying to play the songs or whether it's like a normal ass groove, I just mess up and play a groove with a song and then try to play a fill but then got to the groove part again and then i was like wait what the metronome's lying so i noticed that my timekeeping went better over the last like few weeks and it might be because i have been playing or listening to songs with metronomes <laughs> and i'm gonna totally be honest dude when i was starting drumming i never used metronomes I don't know if anyone else did this, but like, bro, I did not use metronomes at all when I was starting. I'm going to be completely honest. And, you know, I don't want metronomes. I don't need metronomes, I said to myself. But uh, the truth was, I did. Because if you're a beginner watching this video right now, bro, you need to use metronomes more than you should. Because as a beginner, you are actually like adapting to songs and you know your brain is adapting to the tempo and stuff so if you are a beginner you are 
like obligated to play with a metronome. Please, for the love of God, please play with a goddamn metronome. Now the fourth problem that I see a lot with beginner drummers is having stiff hands or wrists. So this problem solution is the same solution as the first two problems. Your body hasn't adapted yet. I mean, you could actually like try some wrist exercises or something like wrist warm-ups. Like I've never really did that. So, but like practicing your rudiments will really, really help with this because I know it sounds super fucking boring, but like if you literally practice on a practice pad for like 10 minutes, you're wrists are gonna be better and that's such a good return on investment so if you're like i don't want to practice on a practice pad because it's so boring dude the boringness will pay off at the very fucking end okay so do not just say like oh yeah i don't need a practice pad because i already have my drum set i can play like bro shut the fuck up i experienced the boring rudiments like no other human being because my drum teacher would give me these new rudiments to learn every single weekend so every single weekend i had to practice new rudiments and it was like it wasn't the same as before like just edited a bit it was like completely fucking different with a completely new like you know variation of a rudiment and stuff and then completely knew like everything like subdivision and stuff so this was a real struggle for me so i understand my beginner drum homies who are currently watching this video and also struggling but my biggest tip that i can give you for boring rudiments is to actually play the rudiments that you've learned as a fill and then play the fill as a song so like you learn a new rudiments let's say you learn paradiddles then you can actually like listen to a song and then make up a fill for that song with the paradiddles so it would be like i learned paradiddles and then i just listened to this new song that i heard and then i play along to that song with the rudiments this makes it not only so much more fun it saves you so much more suffering but also like it's just fun to play to songs and when you actually get the fill bro oh that that moment is so good when you just fit with the song you know so yeah if you practice your rudiments the payoff will be so much greater than your time spending on rudiments so yeah now this is the problem that i had to put up with every single day which is that i didn't have the best drum set now you don't actually need a really nice full ultra big geared special edition rare ultra collector snare with istanbul agop 14.547 inch hi-hat drum set to play drums but it's a really really good return on investment if you're actually planning to play drums or are actually playing drums so i started playing drums with an electronic drum set called the yamaha dtx 42k Whew, that's a fucking name and it's 700 dollars, which is definitely not cheap but the quality made it so cheap to play on like all day i was just hitting some rubber ass like plastic with wooden sticks like bro come on yamaha like seriously bad on you yama i'm so angry you should fix your company it did not emulate a normal acoustic drum set and thus i really didn't like it so to fix this problem all you need to have is one brain and two hands and one computer and one google and what you need to type in is best drum sets that are acoustic for 700 dollars and you can even buy used drum sets like those things are a thing right like those things are a thing like secondhand drums are also a very good option if your budget seems to not fit on good acoustic drums or just acoustic drums so for example if you have the yamaha dtx 402k i can recommend you the pearl roadshow drum set which is roughly the same price and you can 
literally like get it off of Amazon or something like that. And it's way better. It has the good feel and it doesn't really suck that much. Like it's a beginner's drum set. So it's perfect if you're just starting on drums and you might say like oh but what about if i'm living in an apartment well if you're living in an apartment then you can just buy things called quiet heads i i like the ones which are evans it's the brand called evans and they have like a quiet heads that you can just pop on your drum set and actually play and you can buy like quiet cymbals and everything and boom you just got like an 800 dollars drum set that is not shitty and you can practice on forever <laughs> so yeah so not being in control of your dynamics is the worst feeling that i faced with drums i really tried to play my ghosty notes and my hard notes but i really really hated that my hands couldn't play the dynamics i wanted them to now just like all problems at drums it requires practice but i can recommend you this try to play exercises with ghost notes in them so if you're a bit experienced in drumming i would recommend you one of my favorite drum grooves of all time is called the bernard purdy shuffle it's a pretty good groove with lots of ghost notes and kind of dynamics into it so it's a very hard one to learn it definitely took some time to learn for me but it is like the godfather of grooves in my opinion okay so let's go back to when you started playing drums it might be a while ago or recently now remember which genre you played mine was jazz and i only tried to learn jazz things like jazz grips you know the traditional grip and the heel down playing and the everything you know and so when i tried to play the other genres my playing totally didn't fit so remember that you have to get used to all genres and try all genres before like playing only one type of genre because if you want to play pop but you've started playing drums playing jazz just like me then that's not gonna be good is it so listen up i've never actually talked about this on youtube or heard anyone else talk about this on youtube and the problem is that you get too excited to play a fill now let me explain so when i was taking lessons my drum teacher would teach me these cool fills and then i would incorporate those fills into grooves and songs and stuff but i had and have trouble with fills i would play to a song and then i would like you know, the song gets like tension and everything, you know, it starts to like, yeah, build up and then the beat drops and you want to play a cool fill. Well, if you get too excited, you tend to, or at least me, I tend to like mess up the goddamn fill. And this was a very, very like sticky problem that I had because I would get too excited and that would mean that I would mess up the fill. But if I didn't get excited, I would just not play the fill at all which in both cases i can't play the fill so the easiest way i fix this personally is to actually just listen to songs a few times before you play it because why do we actually get excited we get excited because we're gonna do a new thing we're gonna try out a new thing right so that means that if you listen and practice to the song over and over and over again you can actually do it crazy right like boom head idea like giga genius 5000 iq moment but like yeah one time i got my mom to actually play drums and i wanted to teach her how to play drums and i sat her down and taught her how to do it now she couldn't play very well and after she played she told me about this problem a problem i noticed with everyone who started playing drums including me and that was that they don't have any coordination now everyone tells you to practice independence exercises or some other weird shit on the drums or like take this magic mushroom and then you'll have like independent superpowers on the drum set but the boring answer is you just need to practice more coordination bro that's it but we don't just want to practice we want to practice 
efficiently. So a shameless plug to my coaching. And um, this is a sign for you to get my coaching where I can literally kick out individual independence exercises if you're struggling with this. And I would specifically pick out the exercises which you need in order to get independence or like get coordination on drums. Double kicks. <laughs> Some find it easy to do, but others like me have totally stiff right feet. If you have a specific problem, then I totally understand you. And how I fix my double kicks is to practice your double kicks, but practice them in this way. So if you play heels up, a tip that my teacher told me can significantly help you play with your big toe. Now I'm going to be honest, I don't know why this works, but it just works. But if it doesn't work for you, then try playing with your body of the feet. And yeah, this has personally a lot helped me a lot and also play to songs that have like double kicks in them so like a good example would be back to black by amy vinehouse it's if you listen to the drummer he's like bonk, ba -bonk, bonk, 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 ba -bonk, ba -bonk. it's like there's always double kicks so it's a very good practice tool for double kicks now finally after my voice is fucking hurt like i've been recording for 25 minutes now and the last problem is for drummers who are self-taught much like me when i was starting out and when I was starting out, I had a massive ego with drums. And I was too arrogant to learn drums with an actual drum teacher. So I tried to learn drums by myself, of course, miserably failed. And it wasn't the best idea because I learned my techniques wrong. And I was so sloppy. Now, I'm going to assume that you aren't at the level that you want to be right now with drums and if you want personal drum coaching and if you actually want to take your drumming to a next fucking level and not be arrogant like me try to learn drums by yourself then i can offer you a free coaching call which is only free for the next two giga chats that sign up to my coaching and there's only one person left now actually so if you want to be the second giga chad who gets it then i'll see you there